So today we're talking about um, Darkest Dark, Tower. Yeah, 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 Darkest Tower. Um, this will be our first, uh, uh, whatever this is, vlog, YouTube clip, vlog, pod totally. podcast uh, in uh, in English. We've been doing this thing for a few months now in Finnish, and we're sort of brushing up on our English skills as well because there's going to be a very special guests uh, on our channel this spring. But uh, we thought we'd start fittingly with a very, very British film yeah. um, about the events of Dunkirk, uh, the second movie this yeah. year yeah. or the, this past year that has been, been uh, centered around that. Yeah, and if my English is a bit like, um, there's this term in Finland about rally English, which is about rally drivers who speak English really poorly, but they still try to speak it. If mine is similar to that, I do, do apologize. Uh, we'll be covering Darkest Hour, well, mostly through Gary Oldman's performance, Yeah, uh, which I thought was exceptional. It was. Um, and then a bit about what that whole era meant in terms of politics in Europe and the sort of difficult situation that that, that Churchill was put into. Um, and then the feel of the movie yeah. as a sort of a throwback. Because personally, for, for for me, I love superhero movies, but it was a breath of fresh air. It was to it really actually was. see a decent movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, actual no. actual yeah. movie, actual old school. It's like movie yeah, about. eating eating hamburgers for two weeks <laughs> yeah. and then having a good meal, and it's like, oh, thank God, <laughs> yeah. no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, but this was a, yeah, this was definitely a sort of old school filmmaking. It was. And really comforting. Yeah, it was. It was. Filmmaker. It was really beautiful and really good at that. Yeah, there's a special place in my heart for old school filmmaking. I yeah. Just, yeah, it's, 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 we were, yeah, I'm gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it more about the comfort, yeah. comfort food feeling of this kind of movies. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So we're talking about Churchill. Mm. So what did you think of the movie? I, I learned English when I lived in, in Oxford in the 80s for one yeah. and a half years. Cool. Uh, and that was, it was, I was 10. Mm. And that film brought back a lot of memories because it was so quintessentially British. It was. In so many ways. In so many ways. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the first impression that I yeah. got, and the sort of subtlety and the, yeah. and and the, nothing is exaggerated. Mm. All the um, all the performances are sort of nuanced, and yeah. it, the the camera moves quite slowly, and and there's a lot of sort of dramatic grandeur, mm. empire yeah. uh, kind of. Uh, so that that was sort of the aesthetic was the first thing. That we happened. must now select my successor and determine when man the opposition will accept. He stands for one thing and one thing only, himself. Why have I been forced to send for Churchill? This record is a catastrophe. Do you get this sort of a comforting feeling when you see a film like that? It's sort of like a, a fireplace or something like that. I, I always get this. So when I look at this, you know, quintessentially British movies, I always get this sort of a, like this warm feeling in my heart. Because yeah. it's so, it has this sort of, I don't know what it is, where it comes from, but something about the way the movie is made and the people exist in that world is sort of, it has this sort of a, sort of a comforting elegance to it, I guess. Would yeah. Be the way to describe Old world. It. Yeah. Old world feeling. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. For me, I know that other people probably think like this as well. Uh, for me, but for me, it's also so connected to my own childhood mm. that it's difficult for me to separate between the two. 
I don't know how much of an Anglophile I would have been yeah. if I hadn't lived there. Mm. Uh, that led me to doing an MA in English in mm. the university and working with the English language and yeah. all sorts of things. So it's such an integral part of my whole life mm. that it's difficult to separate that. Uh, but I, I get what that is. It, it, it might well be that if I'd never gone there, I'd still sort of feel that that's the sort of hearkening back to the good old days sort of yeah kind I, yeah. yeah sort of it's it's weird because i can't really put my finger to it and what it is and it is it is interesting to hear you say that it's sort of because you you were sort of um i mean you spent one and a half years in britain when you were a kid and um i can imagine that people who have lived there all their lives I mean, I can imagine that the feeling is so much stronger for mm -hmm. people like yeah. that. So, um, it's yeah, an interesting thing. Yeah, it's it's also interesting in the way that that um, last year was the hundredth year of independence in Finland, and mm -hmm. and we had this great big movie that had been done twice already, and then it was redone again now in 2017, and we discussed on this show in Finnish on how how that was sort of how significant that that is in terms of yeah. of the Finnish character and so on. And I was thinking while I was watching this movie that it, is this the same thing for British people? Yeah. That when they see this stuff, is it the same sort of nationalist sort of feeling yeah. that you get? And does that play into? Uh, I mean. I was saying about it's the Finnish where the Finnish film is called The Unknown Soldier and it's it's a it's a great big thing in Finland, um, and sort of everybody in in Finland has seen it, uh, but it's also I was argue, arguing back then that it's it's partly the problem with me watching that movie is that propaganda yeah. kind of thing that do British people get the same feeling? Yeah. Yeah. when watching films like this or 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 dunkirk or yeah. whatever it's an interesting point because i was reading the the re review of the film from helsinki sanoma the biggest newspaper in finland and the critic was talking about it and he or she was saying that um now that um brexit basically has divided the british people because it was almost 50 50 yeah. the votes uh, that in his or her view, it was a curious thing, or not a curious thing, but it sort of made sense that now they have produced these films that basically underline this sort of British unity mm -hmm. and their sort of like, uh, let's call it a glorious past, if you want, mm -hmm. in difficult times, especially, and this... Uh, but I was wondering that do movies really get made that way? Like, is there like this, <laughs> when they saw the Brexit votes and they look at the nation, it's, a, it's pretty divided. Um, should we make a film about Dunkirk or something like that? You know, get everybody on board again? I mean, it's... Well, well in Finland, it was a clear-cut case of doing it because... But I re actually, I read an article yeah. about it and it, it's... Uh, the director had been... It was in the same newspapers. They have this sort of a monthly uh, thing that comes out that has sort of like in-depth reviews of things or news and uh, he was talking about how it was an, a really long process and um, there were questions about if it was gonna ever get made yeah yeah but for um, I, I'm looking at this from I, I don't necessarily think that it is a thing that the directors or the artists mm. or the screenplay uh, writers definitely uh, necessarily think about mm. but when it comes to the money yeah when it comes to the people who are Finally, decide yeah. who, who decide whether this film is going to make mm. money they're going to green light projects that have some sort of uh, cultural relevance true that is true and and in this case i think especially in fin in finland the unknown soldier i think that they clearly saw that this is this is a this is a film that's going to make money anyway but especially now mm. it's going to make money yeah, but I was wondering about the actual financing side of it because I think they got something like I think the budget was what seven million euro, yeah, yeah, and they got probably 
if I remember correctly, it was one million from this sort of, uh, what is it, uh, this cultural fund, fund yeah. basically, yeah, and the rest was just independent donors and just yeah. all this, this, there was this huge marketing campaign connected to it. They sold, sold everything from coffee to toilet brushes with the tagline of the unknown soldier, really. So, um, but then again, that is also, that's naturally part of the financing. So it basically yeah. uh, sort of validates your point. Yeah. Um, and in this case, I think, um, for some reason now, I think that it's hard to argue against the Brexit idea, hmm. because there's two major contenders now for an Oscar movie yeah. that are both centered at, around Dunkirk, mm. uh, which is, like you said, a time of, in a, in a, in a difficult time, the, the, the country comes yeah. together. And, and, and especially with Dunkirk, when, when, the, when the civil fleet is mobilized mm, true, true. through uh, government incentive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the the fishermen and the, the, the sailors who went out mm. over the channel, yeah. they could have avoided doing that. Yeah. They could have just, you know, sailed off, off to some place mm. and they, they, there would have been no way for them. So it was a, it was a, um, it was a grassroots effort in that yeah. way, although it was a mobilization from mm. the government side, it was, it, it had to well, Dunkirk so shows it better with this one boat going yeah. over of, of, of a father and two kids and yeah. who have nothing. They don't have any mm. weaponry and they have yeah. nothing and they know that, that it's going to be basically hell on the other, yeah. si on the other side and they still decide to go yeah. with this tug boat, mm. small. Basically, yeah, a really small boat. Yeah. Aren't you waiting on the Navy? They've asked for the Moonstone, they'll have her. And her captain. <gasps> And this son. Thanks for the help, George. What are you doing? You do know where we're going. France. Into war, George. It's funny because in Dunkirk there's this scene. Uh, I can imagine somebody writing a paper about it connected to Brexit because you remember the the character played by Kenneth Branagh says that you can, he's, in, he's in like in the European Union area in France and he's like, you can almost see it from here. What? Home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, well, okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You, can, you can sort of see the logic behind the idea that it's connected to the Brexit. But the whole empire idea is also interesting in the way that that, that, that is what the what Great Britain mm. has been for, I don't know, 30 years now, just harking back to the old days. The, 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 really? I mean, I, I mean, in terms of, of there really being an empire, mm. there, there isn't an empire anymore. No. And I think that one of the reasons that Brexit happened was that, that people still think that there is yeah. sort of, that there this great, great nation. Great nation uh, which they are in terms of culture mm. and history and stuff like that, but in terms of in terms of everything else, mm. uh, they really need Europe. Yeah, they do.